When you look at a firm's pension disclosures, you might see acronyms like VBO, ABO, and PBO, and you might be wondering what those things mean. So the VBO is the vested benefit obligation, and that's the present value of all the vested benefits based on the employee's current salaries. And so what vested benefits are, they're benefits that the employees have already earned and are entitled to, right? So something that's non-vested might mean that the employee has to work there a certain number of years, let's say 20 years, in order to have the benefit vest or where they'd be entitled to it, right? So maybe they've only worked there 12 years, right? And then the benefit doesn't kick in until they've been an employee of the company for 20 years. So you would say that the benefits haven't vested yet, right? And so when they've actually worked there 20 years, then you would say that the benefits have vested, right? So when we just look at the present value of the vested benefits, that's the VBO, the vested benefit obligation, right? So that's going to be the smallest of these three because the next largest one, the ABO, the accumulated benefit obligation, is going to be the present value of both vested and non-vested benefits based on employees' current salaries, right? So if we say, okay, look, even the employees who haven't vested yet, they've only worked there 20 years, for example, let's also count the firm's obligation to those employees in terms of the pension retirement obligation, right? So when we look at the vested and non-vested benefits, that's the accumulated benefit obligation. But you notice that in each case, we're looking at the current salaries of the employees, right? But what's likely to happen over time? Well, salaries are probably going to go up over time, right? So as an employee goes from working there 12 years to 20 years, their salary is probably going to go up, right? So to account for that, we have the biggest of these three, the projected benefit obligation, right? And that is the present value of vested and non-vested benefits, just like ABO, but it's based on future salaries. It's assuming, right? You've got some actuaries who they come up with some assumptions about what the future salaries of these employees will be because that's going to affect potentially their pension benefit, right? So the PBO is actually going to be the largest of these three obligations, right? And the PBO is actually the one you're going to net with the fair market value of the plan assets in order to determine whether the, uh, the pension is underfunded or overfunded, right? So if we think about the size of these, so the VBO is going to be the smallest, right? And then the ABO will be the next largest. And then the PBO, the projected benefit obligation, will be the largest.